Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve lead code 11, container with most water. We're given an integer array height of length n. So there are n vertical lines drawn such that the two endpoints of the ith line are i0 and i height at i. We need to find the two lines that together with the x axis form a container such that the container contains the most water. And we need to return the max amount of water that it can store. So for this example, we have our array of heights and here's our picture to visualize it. So all of the vertical lines are the heights and the two red vertical lines are the most optimal solution. So it turns out that the most amount of water you can store is with the height of eight and the far height of seven. Now for any two heights, we can create a container and the area is calculated by height times width except the height has got to be the height of the smaller bar so here this height is eight this one is seven so if you're making a container with these two bars you have to use the smaller height so the height is seven the width is the distance between these two so that's one two three four five six seven so we have seven for the height seven for the width therefore if we use these two bars we get the maximum water we can store which is 49. Now, if we wanted to look at all possible bars, we could use two indices basically in a nested for loop style. So we could send for i through all of them, then for j through all of them in a nested for loop. That is going to give an O of n squared solution to look at all the possible pairs. That's the brute force, and it's not very fast. The better way to do this is still to use two indices, but we're going to start one at the beginning and one at the end. And we're actually going to call this one to be left, and this one is going to be right. Now to calculate any area, it's dependent on the width, which is going to be the difference between the indices, and the height, which is the minimum bar. But we care equally about these two things. It's just a multiplication, so we care equally about the width and the height. Now we've organized this such that the maximum width is already at the very beginning. So here's the most amount of width we could get and when we move the indices towards each other we're getting one less width and one less width whenever we move the indices towards each other we're always getting less width so we've basically sorted this by the maximum width going down to the smallest width now we'll get back to that in a moment. Let's just calculate our current area. We have these two bars with a height of one, a height of seven. Our height has to be the minimum, which is going to be one. Our width is the distance. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are going to get a current area of eight. We'll keep track of that as the max area that we've seen so far. So far we have an area of eight. Now from here, we want to move either L to the right or R to the left. Well, which bar would we rather keep? We'd obviously rather this bar because it's much higher than this one. And that's really the only question we have to ask. We know no matter what, we're going to get our width down. Our width is going to decrease as we move forward no matter what. So really all we can decide here is say, hey, let's keep the better bar. If we keep the better bar while we move L over here, we immediately get the optimal solution. So here we get our height of seven, which is the minimum of eight and seven. We get our width, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are going to become seven times seven, which is equal to 49. And we get our max area is higher than eight. So we'll update that, we get 49. And if we're to keep this pattern up, we would prefer this bar, and therefore we would move R forward. We go over here, we calculate our new area, it's gonna end up being smaller, and so we're not ever going to update this. We just keep doing this, keeping the better bar. We calculate this area, these are the same. Which bar do we prefer when the heights are the same? It actually doesn't matter. You could move over either of them, and so we move L over, and from here we'd end up just keep moving L over. Eventually we'd get to them when they're the same. This would basically be a while loop, we'd say while L is less than R, because there's no reason to check if L is equal to R, because that's just one bar. We would do this thing while L is less than R, keeping track of our maximum by calculating this area every time. We just always keep the bar that we'd prefer, and if the bars are ever equal to each other, you can pick either one. Now the reason that this works is we've pre-sorted it by the width. This is the maximum amount of width at the beginning and it's only going to go down from there. Every single time it goes down, all that we really need to consider is the height. And so we do that by just keeping the bar that is higher than a lower bar. Okay, so here's our solution. We'll get n is the length of the height. That's how many heights we have. We get l is the beginning, which we'll set to be zero. We'll get r at the end, which is the last index located at n minus one. And we'll get an initial max area that we've seen. We'll keep track of this and update it when we see a better area. We're going to set that off at zero. 
So again, we'll do this while L is less than R. There's no reason doing it any more than that. We can get our width, which is the difference between the indices. That is W is R minus L. And then we can get the height is the minimum of the two bars, which is the height at L and the height at R, so that we can calculate our current area, which is W times H. Now we'll set the max area to be the maximum of what it was before. So we don't want to change it if our current area is lower, but it's the max of the max area and the current area A. So if a bar is bigger than the other, we want to keep that one. If they're the same, then we don't really care. So we can do that with if the height of L is less than the height of R. If that's clearly true, we want to keep R. And so by keeping R, we just simply move over L instead. We do L plus equals one. Otherwise, if they're equal or if the height of R is actually smaller, well, then we want to move R over. We do that with R minus equals one. Now we've moved over the bars. So all we have to do is exit this loop and we can return the max area that we saw. And this solution does pass the tests. So for the time complexity, it's just this while loop here. It runs while L is less than R. So basically the worst thing we could possibly do is just move over every single thing here. In fact, we're gonna do that every single time. Every single time we'll either move L over or R over. We'll go through the array effectively once. And so the time complexity is definitely O of N. And the space complexity of this doesn't actually use anything here. These are just a bunch of variables. We're not storing any arrays or anything. And so the space complexity is a very optimal O of one. So here's the entire solution. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and I'll see you later.